when I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. And he took me with him. Hey, everybody. Some time ago, I made a video that posed 11 questions that, to this very day, Globe Deniers cannot answer. And of all the questions I asked, the one that stumped Globe Deniers the most was actually surprising to me. The one they had the hardest time answering was the first one. Where are Mercury and Venus right now? Most people, the vast majority of Globe Deniers that tried to answer the question, said that Mercury and Venus weren't planets. They're just light or projections on the dome or something, which wasn't the question. The question was, where are they, not what are they? Yet, globe deniers are always so focused on trying to say the accepted model is wrong that they couldn't even manage to hear the question correctly. It was amazing. But the reason I bring this up today is because tomorrow, at about this time, the transit of Mercury is going to occur. That is, Mercury is going to pass directly between the Earth and the Sun. And this is something that the globe deniers, small local Sun claim, cannot explain. We know that Mercury is going to pass in front of the Sun tomorrow, 24 hours from now. If the Sun is small and local, and Mercury is going to be between the Sun and us, where is Mercury right now? And why can't we see it? Is it somewhere outside the dome right now, sitting in its dressing room, waiting for a curtain call, and when the proper time comes, it's just going to pop out and smile for the camera for six hours and then disappear? Why don't globe deniers have an explanation for this yet? I mean, they are silent as hell on this topic, and it's not like this is a sudden thing. I mentioned this in my 11 questions video two and a half years ago. They passed between the Earth and the Sun. Mercury will transit again in 2019. Where are Mercury and Venus right now? Yet nothing from the nearby sun crowd. And you know why? Because it breaks their claim. The transit of Mercury will be visible all across the world tomorrow, which could not happen if the sun were close by. For example, Daniel Pratt in a recent video proposed that the sun was 30 miles up. Okay, so if that were true, then tomorrow, when the sun is straight up overhead in, say, Santa Cruz, Bolivia, at 11.58 a.m., its peak, the sun, according to some, is 30 miles away from the viewers on the ground. And it's predicted that Mercury will be seen about right here. At that exact time, in Oakland, some 5,424 miles away, Mercury will be seen against the sun right here. A little bit of a difference, but, oh, wait, these locations are on opposite hemispheres. One's looking from south towards the north and the other one north toward the south. So let me flip one over and see. Oh, my glob, it's the exact same spot. But, but according to nearby sun people, people at these locations are looking at totally different sides of the sun. And not only that, Oakland is 180 times farther away from the 30-mile-high sun yet we see the exact same thing. That's not possible in this flat earther fantasy. Now, I'm not saying that there has to be a globe for the transit of Mercury to happen. Not at all. But as you can see here, in order for the view from these locations to be the same on a globe or a flat earth, the sun and Mercury need to be very, very far away. The sun is not small and local. And the transit of Mercury proves it. And that's why globe deniers don't talk about it. Take care, everybody. That's my job. That's what I do. I don't... Okay, okay, okay. I just had this one more little thing to drop in. In a very recent video, Daniel Pratt claimed high-altitude balloon footage proved a local sun. By claiming, since the high-altitude camera was able to look relatively straightforward and see the sun, like, like toward the horizon, if the sun was high up and far away, he claims the camera would have to be tilted high up. The sun in his drawing is right here. 
And as you can see, a camera right here in a high altitude balloon, just above the surface there, would have to tilt upwards. But this is just another case of a flat earther trying to critique the globe model, but not being able to get out of the flat plane mindset. Daniel, I'm going to show you very simply how this works on a globe. The camera is not right here. It's here. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.